Good evening. Welcome to our Bible study tonight. I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us as we open God's Word together. Uh, Before we start, let's have a word of prayer uh, together. Father, we pause to say thank you for tonight. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Uh, Father, I want to pray for the people that are watching tonight, that God, you would just uh, be with them and encourage them. But Father, also that you would just uh, let them learn something from your Word tonight, Father, that they could grasp, that they could take and and use in their life, that, Father, it might encourage them and encourage others uh, around them. Father, I, I want to just pray for those in our church family that are sick, uh, those that are, that are uh, whether they're having problems with COVID or, uh, Father, whether they're in the hospital because of cancer or other things, that, Father, you just wrap your arms around them. Father, I want to pray for those in our church that are traveling, those that are getting ready to travel, the upcoming mission trip, uh, Father, there's just a lot that's going on. Uh, and Father, I just pray for our country during this time that we could be a voice of reason, a voice of healing, and a voice of hope. That, Father, it would be you that people would see and not us. Uh, forgive us where we fail you. It's in your name we're going to pray tonight. Amen. So tonight we're going to continue our study uh, in, in uh, Acts chapter 24. Uh, we looked at a couple of weeks for the last several weeks uh, about... Paul and how Paul, when he went to the temple to uh, uh, purify, basically, the Jews came, they arrested him, they uh, beat him up, they had him imprisoned, uh, then uh, they schemed to kill him, and uh, last week we seen that they snuck him out uh, of of Jerusalem, Uh, now he's before Felix, and as he's before Felix, we see that there are some things that are going on in his life that that uh, are going to transpire that's going to show us a few things. Now in Acts chapter 24 verses 1 through 9, we're going to look at these words together and we're going to pause throughout this, uh, this, um, this uh, passage and we're going to look at different aspects of it. Uh, so uh, let's, let's look uh, at Acts chapter 24. Let's look at verse 1. It says, Now after the day, five days, Ananias the high priest came down with the elders uh, and a certain orator named Tertullus. Now, what we see is this. After five days, um, the, the uh, Jews had found out where Paul was, and, and, and now that they had found out where he was, uh, they were ready to pursue um, uh, the charges against him, and they were ready to pursue uh, what was going on. Now, what's interesting here is that we meet three people uh, or three groups of people in in, in uh, verse one. Uh, the first th- person that we meet is Ananias. He he is the uh, high priest of the uh, Jewish Sanhedrin court, and and so as we see uh, Ananias here, uh, or Aeneas, however you want to say his name, um, we we see that that the high priest himself made the trip. It wasn't just hey, I'm going to send these guys down. Uh, we're going to make sure that this is taken care of. He himself came. Uh, to uh, to be at the trial. Now, also, we see that there were other elders, other leaders among the Jewish sect that were there in Jerusalem. They also themselves came with uh, him. But then we meet a man by the name of Tertullus. And this is what we're told about Tertullus, is that he is an orator. Uh, now, what we need to know about an orator here is it's another word for a lawyer. Uh, so they said, listen, we're, we're not as enabled or astute to, um, to Roman law as one should be. So what we're going to do is we're going to hire a person who is not a Jew, and they're going to represent us before Rome. Now, I want you to realize something. When we see this, uh, we have to realize that, that one day every knee will bow before uh, Jesus Christ. And one day every tongue is going to confess who Jesus Christ is. Now, when we look at the the Pharisees, uh, Sadducees, and the high priest and the elders that are here, I want you to know something that brought them to Felix's court. Uh, Hate. Hate had brought them to Felix's court. Hate had brought them uh, to come before Paul and to literally tear down who Paul was, to defame his character, but more importantly than that, uh, they didn't want anything to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to realize that as we see, uh, there's not any evidence besides one thing uh, that can be issued as evidence against Paul, and that is this, is that he is a Christian. 
He is a person that follows Christ. Now, I want you to think about it. Think about all the people that hate, uh, hated Jesus then. And think of all the people that hate Jesus today. Just as we see in this, tonight's scriptures, I think you're going to find out that many of them people that hate Jesus the most are the most religious people. Uh, many of them who have power and prestige, many of them who have great ability, uh, those are people that hate Jesus. Why do they hate Jesus so much? Uh, and I think, I think that comes down to a heart problem. It comes down to the heart of people. Sometimes our heart is so hardened toward God because we didn't get what we want, how we want it, when we want it, and so therefore we look at God and say, because you didn't do this, 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 and this, that God, I, I, I'm, I'm frustrated at your people. I'm frustrated at you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I hate anything and everything that you are. And that's what a lot of people are today. A lot of people have this hatred toward Christianity because that they think that Jesus is some type of ATM machine. I want you to realize this. When we live for Jesus, the world is not going to like us. They're not going to love us and embrace us the way we think or the way we want to be perceived. Um, now, when we meet these guys in, in verse 1, if you look at the last part of verse 1, it says that these gave evidence to the governor against Paul and when the, uh, he called upon Tertullus to begin his accusation, uh, saying these men were set to give evidence against Paul to Felix, and Tertullus uh, was uh, was his chief prosecutor. So what we see here basically is this, is these men were set to give evidence. These men came to say, hey, this is the evidence that we have to bring charges up onto him. And Tertullus is going to be the one that's going to prosecute. Now, what I want you to understand something about uh, about uh, Mr. Uh, Tertullus is this, is that, or Tertullus, it depends on however you want to say it, um, is that that he is he is he reminds me if you just read what uh, verbatim what the Bible says about him, uh, he sounds like to me some snake oil salesman, or better yet, maybe uh, maybe a used car salesman, or you could even go down to say I, I would even push it as far as uh, one of those vacation rental uh, people, uh, you know, timeshare. Uh, guys, I guess that's what you'd call them, you know, um, those timeshare guys that, uh, oh, this is this is the best thing. You're such a wonderful. Anyway, as you as we go through tonight, I think you'll you'll find a little bit of humor in that. And that is is this is that he says, seeing that the uh, throw uh, we uh, you, that through you, we enjoy great peace and prosperity is being brought to this nation by your foresight. We accept it always and in all peace, most noble Felix, uh, with all thankfulness. When you see this, is that you see that this guy is, uh, his statement, he's basically, he's charming Felix. He's basically saying, you know, we enjoy great peace. We enjoy great peace. I want you to think about this. Did the Jews enjoy peace? Absolutely not. It seemed like uh, all throughout their Roman occupation, uh, while they were being occupied by Rome, it's always like they were stirring the pot. They were always stirring the pot. They were always stirring the pot. They were great agitators. Uh, they weren't people of peace uh, as, as much as what we see here as they, say, as they want. But then he says, you know, we also, not only do we enjoy great peace, but we also enjoy great prosperity. Uh, and and, and that, that in itself is, is kind of, uh, uh, misleading. It's mis uh, it's misleading for the simple reason is that remember the Jews were occupied. They were occupied by Rome, and so as they were occupied by Rome, uh, it wasn't uh, that they were a prosperous nation. It was that they were going to be a subservient uh, 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 group of people. They were going to follow what Rome said, and they were going to live according to Roman Romans rules. Uh, and, and laws that they had that that was uh, that was what they had to do. They were occupied people, and it says, uh, and basically they go on. This is all possible because of your foresight. Now, notice that he continues. He says, "This is all because of your foresight," um, and, and basically he's saying this. He's saying, "Listen, you are looking far off. You're looking far in the distance. You're looking far in the future uh, because of your uh, foresight." We have peace and prosperity. Now, uh, 
I, I want you to realize something. That that's that's kind of a, a hard thing because Felix isn't the end all. He isn't the stopping man. There's there's going to be another trial after this, after this trial. But but what we see here is is that that they wanted to make it seem like they were. Uh, people who loved Felix, who loved the law that Felix served and, and, and wanted to make people see uh, that, that we or they are, are uh, great people who, whose law is not burdensome, it's not grievous, it's, it is just simply that. But in verse 3 we say this, that it says that we accept it always and with all uh, places, most noble Felix, with all all thankfulness. Now we always accept it. I want you to think about that. What they just uh, they, they they said. We accept it always. I don't know how many of us accept things always. Do you always accept uh, God's word as God's word? I hope you do. But I'm going to just tell you this: is sometimes God's word will challenge you, and when God's word challenges you, you might accept it, but it's going to take some time for you to really accept it. Does that make sense? Because sometimes God's word makes it to where we have to change. And when we have to change, it causes friction within our life. It causes friction within our belief structure. And so they say, we always accept what you have to say, Felix. Did, did, what, what did the Jews look at uh, the Gentiles as? They, well, we know what they looked at the Gentiles uh, as. Matter of fact, we know that the Samaritan people, they absolutely hated the Samaritans. They looked at them as dogs as half breeds and, and 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 that in itself you say well man that's kind of that's kind of harsh it, it is but that's what they looked at them as and and what we see within their belief structure is this is uh we always accept it no we don't and then we accept it in all places so basically what they're just saying here is this is we accept it not only uh, on, on the surface level, but we accept it in all places. Not only your law that applies to you, but we're also going to take your law and apply it to the temple. Did that really happen? Did that real? Does that really occur the way that they're saying it occurs? Absolutely not. And the reason it doesn't happen that way is because they this was this was a tactic. This was a tactic that they were using. Let me butter you up. Let me let you know how good you are so I can turn around and basically stab you in the back is what, what, what is going on here. But notice what he says here. Um, it says, with all thankfulness. We're always thankful for you. Verse 4 says, nevertheless, not to be tedious uh, to you any further, I beg you to hear by your courtesy a few words from us. Now, now they began to say, okay, uh, we buttered him up. Now we're, we want you to hear what we have to say. Because what we have to say is important. You know, have you ever been involved in a conversation where you knew it was going to be contentious? And yet, as much as you knew it was going to be contentious, you knew that there were, uh, uh, th there were some pros before you got to the cons. And that's exactly what's happening here. Is is they, they, they said, hey, listen, let's get him on our side before we drop the hammer let's get him on our side before we let him know what we think about this paul because he's going to think we're good guys because we're we're speaking first and we're going to we're going to lay it all out there for them and and he says i want you to be listen to what we're fixing to say and this is tertullus speaking and this is what tertullus has to say and of course he's representing his clients he's representing the the jews he's representing the elders he's representing the high priest and notice what he says, nevertheless, not to be tedious. Uh, in verse 5, he goes on to say this, For we have found this man a plague, a creator of dissension among the, all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Now, it, it's, it's amazing because they said, we want you to realize there's a couple of things that, that, that you need to know. This man is a plague. I'm not, I have people that I don't really care for that much, but I've never looked at somebody and said, hey, they're a plague. I mean, that, that's pretty harsh, don't you think? This man is a plague. They looked at Paul and said, he is a plague. Not only did they say he's a plague, they would make another allegation against him. And he is, he is uh, this man is a creator of dissension among the Jews and throughout the world. 
Now think about that. First of all, he's a plague. The second thing is, is this, is he is a creator of dissension among the Jews and all of the world. So therefore, he is a threat. And if he's a threat to us, and you need to know this, he's a threat to you too, Felix. He's a threat to what you stand for. He's a threat for who you serve. He's a threat for your way of life. And they said, hey, listen, let's throw a little bit more on there because he's now a ringleader of the Nazarenes. Now that that is that is an interesting thing. We'll go into this a little bit more later on, but um, now they said, okay, so this is what he is. This is who he is. But then they go on and say in, in verse six um, and seven, he says, uh, he have tried, he even tried to profane the temple and we seized him and wanted to judge him according to our law. But the commander, Lysias, came by with and with great violence and took him out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come to you by examining him yourself. You may ascertain all these things which he is accused. Now what we see is this. We seized him. They, they, they did. They seized him. They, he says, listen, we want you to know we, we seized him. Because he was doing this, and we wanted to try him according to our law, but your commander, your commander interfered with us. Your commander interfered and took him by great violence, took him out of our hands, and commanded his accusers to come to you. So, you got to realize something. They buttered him up, and now they're making accusations against somebody, one of his subordinates. They're making allegations that this man did not do his job the way that he was supposed to do. Don't you find it those people that complain about the way somebody does their job the most are normally the people that don't do anything? Think about it. A lot of times uh, we complain about uh, people in church. We complain about people in our job place. Well, they just don't do anything. And normally you're the one that's not doing anything. Think about that for a minute. That's kind of harsh, but it's truth. Um, And so... We see that they wanted to try him according to their law. And and we know that their law, they were going to kill him. They were going to stone him to death. They were going to get rid of him. Um, and it says, by you examining him yourself, uh, we want you to ascertain the things that we're accusing him of. And the Jews, uh, and the Jews also ascertained, uh, assent- I'm sorry, assented, maintaining that these things were so. By you examining him yourself, uh, Felix, you're going to find out what we're saying is true. And by you uh, looking at him, you're going to find out that he assented or he he did all these things that we're telling you about. And 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 so we want you to realize that, Felix, that that these things are true. Now I want you to think about that. In verses five and six, they 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 had buttered him up. They had literally buttered him up. And then in five, I'm sorry, in verses two and three and four, they buttered him up. Verses five and six, they drop the hammer and say, this is who he is. In verse five, they, they basically have called him a plague, a pestilence to fe- uh, followers. Uh, they, they call Paul a disease, uh, someone who does nothing but causes strife and rebellion over all the world. They profaned uh, uh Everything that was good and everything that was holy, everything that was that problematic, it was his fault. So what a horrible thing to say. What a horrible thing to say. Remember, according to the Old Testament law, you're not supposed to bear false witness. And these men, by allowing their attorney to do just that, were literally bearing false witness. But when we think about this, and we think about the horrible things that were said about Paul here. And you might have had some horrible things said about you by religious people too. I want to ask you this. What about Jesus in all this? What about Jesus in all of this? The things that were, were told here is this. And some lessons that we need to learn. We go back to what, what, um, what Jesus told his disciples. In John chapter 15, verses 17 and 18, Jesus said two very important things that we need to wrap our uh, hands around. The first thing that he says is this, these things I command you, that you love 
one another. Love one another. And verse 18 is, is where he really gets into the heart of it because he says, basically, I want you to realize if the world hates you, know that it hated me before it ever hated you. Paul. Paul was now not only hearing the word, but was now having to demonstrate it in his life. So there are two key things that I want you to walk away tonight knowing. First of all is this. The God, is, the God that lives inside of you is bigger than the allegations before you. Child of God, listen. There are a lot of allegations around the world that people want to accuse believers of doing. Matter of fact, there's a lot of people that are out there that have done some horrible and grievous acts in the name of God. But for those of us that live for Christ, we need to realize this. The one that lives inside of us is bigger than the allegations that are before us. There are some people who have tried to do irreparable damage to the cause of Christ. But remember this, Jesus has a way of changing people and changing things. And the, third, uh, the second thing is this, is that flattery will only get you so far. We need to know the truth of the word. Not just parts that we want. We need to know all of it. And that's why it's important for us to look and to know and to follow the word of God. But in order to follow the word of God, we have to get in the word of God. Are you in the word of God? How is the word of God changing you? Father, tonight we stop. We say thank you for opening our eyes to your word that, Father, we could follow you and live for you. Father, strengthen us. Encourage us. Even though we're living in a trying time, God, may we be a witness for you. It's been said many times, if we were put on trial for claiming to be a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict us? Oh God, I pray there would be. Because our world right now needs the light of Christ. And trying times are ahead. But God, greater is he that is in me than he that is in all the world. Help us to continue to find strength and resolve according to your son, Jesus. Amen. A couple of announcements for you tonight. First thing is this is uh, we're, we want to encourage everybody in our church family to connect with at least three people in our church family. Connect with three uh, uh, people in our church family. We need people to know that we care, that we love them. And and trust me, we're, we've done a lot. A lot. We we've tried to contact as many people as possible, but um, as the longer this uh, pandemic wanes on, the longer it, it, we need to realize that we've got to uh, continue to reach out. And church family, we need to encourage you and ask you to help us. Please let us know that you're willing to help us out. Do this. The next thing is this: is this Sunday night uh, we're going to have our family meeting at 5 p.m. I hope and pray that you'll join us. We're going to, we want everybody that can be present as safely as possible to be inside the facility. Um, if you have to join us via Zoom, we will have Zoom available, but I do want you to realize something. Um, we may or may not be able to hear you very well. So uh, I need you to uh, try to come and join us for this night. Uh, but we'll also, like I said, post a Zoom link uh, for anybody that would like to um, join that way. Uh, we may have to limit comments on there and also understand this is that we'll have to move very quickly to be through in the time frame that we're supposed to be through. And I hope and pray that you have a good night. God bless you. We'll see you later.